the angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. How Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Go forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As Virgis me domine, he so poet mundabur, Lavabis me superhimem de angabur, Miserere me deus secundum magne misericordia tua. Gloria patria, filio, spiritui santo, Sicuderat in principio, et nunc et sempre, Et in secula seculorum. Amen. As Virgis me domine, he so poet mundabur, Lavabis me superhimem de angabur, O sendi nobis Domine misericordiam tuam, et salutare tuum da nobis, Domine exalti razione mea, et clamo meo sate venia, Dominus vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo, orremus. Exalti nos Domine Sancte Pater, onipotente tere Deus, et vita le digne ali Sanctum Angelum tuum de celis, qui custodia et povea et protega, visite et atque defenda omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo, Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen.
non fitio Deo, omnipotenti, beate Maria et sempre Vigine, beato Michael Archangelo, beato Ioanni Battista, Sancti Apostoli, Sperto e Paolo, omnibus Sanctis et Tibi Pater, qui è per cavinini, scogitazione, verbo e opere. Meo culpa, meo culpa, meo maxima culpa. Ed io prego beata Maria sempre Vigine, beato Michael Archangelo, Beato Ioane Battista, Santos Apostolos, Spiritum et Paulum, Omnes Santos et Te Pater, orrari pro me, a Domino Deo Nostro. Misericordia, grazie a tutti, 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 grazie
Perigi di gloria eterna, qui potui transcredi et non trenes, et non est transgressus, pagere mala, et non feci, id eus habilita sunt bona ilius in domino. Deo gratias, Domine spes mea et iubetute mea, in te confirmatus sum ex utero de ventre matris mei, tu es protecto meus, e autem pronte innocentiam suscipisti, et confirmasti me in spetu tuo in eternum. Alleluia, alleluia, beatus quem elegisti et assumsisti, in habitabit in atis tuis. Alleluia. Dominus Suaviscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, sequentia Sancti Evangelii secundum et Teum, Gloria Tibi Domine. In illo tempore respondens Iesus et seducias, erratis nescienti scripturas neque vetutem Dei, in resurrezione eium neque nubent neque nubentur, sed enum sicut angeli Dei in cielo. De resurrezione aut motuorum non legistis codictum est a Deo dicente vobis, Egus un Deus Abraham, e Deus Esaic, e Deus Iacob, non est Deus motuorum, sed vivensium. Et avientes turbe meravantur in doctrina eus, tarisse autem avientes quod silentium imposuissit a saduceis, convenerunt in unum, et interrogavit unum, eum unus ex eis, legis doctor, tentans eum. Magister, quod es mandatum magnum in lege? Et ili Iesus. Diligest dominum Deum tuum ex toto corde tuo, et in tota anima tua, et in tota mente tua, hoc es maximum et prima mandatum. Secundum autem simili est huit, diligest proximum tuum secut teipsum. In his tuobus mandatis universa ne expendide profetae. Nas tibi Christi. On this, the feast day of St. Aloysius Gonzaga. The epistle is taken from the Book of Wisdom. Beloved is the man who lives unreproved, who has no greed for gold, puts no trust in his store of riches. Show us such a man, and we will be loud in his praise. Here is a life to wander at. A man so tested and found perfect wins eternal honour. He kept clear of sin when sinful ways were easy, did no wrong when wrong lay in his power. His treasure is safely preserved in the Lord's keeping, and wherever faithful souls are met, his alms deeds will be remembered. And the Holy Gospel is a continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus said in reply to the Sadducees, You are wrong. You do not understand the Scriptures, or what is the power of God. When the dead rise again, there is no marrying and giving in marriage, they are as the angels in heaven are. But now, in the matter of the resurrection, did you never read what God himself said? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Yet it is of living men, not of dead men, that he is God. This the multitude heard and were amazed by his teaching. And now the Pharisees, hearing how he had put the Sadducees to silence, met together. And one of them, a lawyer, put a question to try him. Master, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and thy whole soul and thy whole mind. This is the greatest of the commandments and the first. And the second its like is this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments all the law and the prophets depend. And the proper last Gospel for the third Sunday after Pentecost is a continuation of that according to St Luke. 
At this time, when they found all the publicans and sinners coming to listen to Jesus, the Pharisees and scribes were indignant. Here is a man, they said, that entertains sinners and eats with them. Whereupon he told them this parable. If any of you owns a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does he not leave the other ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he finds it, he sets it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and so goes home and calls his friends and his neighbours together. Rejoice with me, he says to them. I have found my sheep that was lost. So it is, I tell you, in heaven. There will be more rejoicing over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine souls that are justified and have no need of repentance. Or if some woman has ten silver pieces by her and has lost one of them, does she not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds, and when she does find it, she calls her friends and her neighbours together. Rejoice with me, she says, I have found the silver piece which I lost. So it is, I tell you, with the angels of God, there is joy among them over one sinner that repents. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum, benedictum mulieribus e benedictus uctus ventris tui Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et radi motis nostre. Amen. In nobre pacis e filii e spiritus sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass. On this, uh, the feast, as we say to Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, whose epithet may be, May we who have not imitated him in innocence follow his example of penance. He died on this day, June the 21st, in 1591. And his grave is at a Rome in a chapel dedicated to his honour in the Church of St. Ignatius. He is depicted as a Jesuit with a cross, lily and skull. An angelic youth, innocence, intent upon penance. In a short time he accomplished the work of many years, so sent St. Robert Bellarmine, who assisted him at his deathbed, along with many others who knew him intimately, have vouched that Aloysius never committed a mortal sin during his whole life. His most astounding virtue was angelic purity of soul. Through a special grace it was never soiled by so much as an impure thought. He has been designated as the patron of youth. Aloysius was born in 1568 of an illustrious family. At the age of nine, he made a vow of virginity before the altar of the Blessed Virgin at Florence. From the hands of St. Charles Borromeo, he received First Holy Communion. His life was one of severest mortification. He could spend as long as five hours in prayer without suffering the least distraction. After countering opposition from his father for three years, he finally gained permission to enter the Society of Jesus. In the service of the sick, he contracted a grave illness and died in his 24th year after being scourged on his deathbed according to his wish and put on the ground. This Mass, of course, was specifically uh, composed for uh, the remembrance of this saint. The formula mirroring the life of St Aloysius is a good example of the style found in later compositions of the liturgy. In the introit, we praise his angelic purity of soul. You have made him a little less than the angels. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Cast in classic phrasing, the collect orients our petition. In Aloysius, God united wonderful innocence with a like spirit of mortification, and then states the request proper. May we who have not imitated him in innocence follow his example of penance. The lesson is particularly apt today. He could have sinned but did not. He, the son of a prince and of the royal court. The gradual and the alleluia tell the story of his vocation. From the womb of his mother he was predestined. In his childhood he de dedicated himself to God. In early youth he entered a religious order despite severe and prolonged opposition. The gospel, likewise, is specially chosen. The angelic lives of the saints foreshadow their future life with the angels in heaven. Its closing sentences describe Aloysius' great love of God and neighbour. 
In the offertory of the Mass, we will behold our saint ascending the Mount of Heaven. And in the secret, we see ourselves seated with Aloysius at the wedding feast, wearing wedding garments. The garment of our saint, however, is studded with glistening pearls, his tears of penance. In the sacrifice banquet, we eat the bread of angels and then petition that we too may live like the angels, continually giving thanks to God. Each text that is proper to this Mass could well serve as the subject for a profitable meditation. And indeed, my brothers and sisters, for we all are like called to follow after the example of St Aloysius, after the example of Jesus. The angelic lives of the saints foreshadow our future life with the angels in heaven too. And the golden rule, as it is sometimes called, or the summary of the law, is the key by which, my brothers and sisters, we may hope ourselves to attain that same level of love and adoration of God by the living of our lives, in the way we love him and in the way we love each other. In the proper last gospel for the third Sunday after Pentecost, we are reminded, in many ways, indeed, even of the mission of the Society of Jesus, or at least the early missions of the Society of Jesus. This notion of being sent out to search for the one lost sheep. If you remember your ecclesiastical history, St Aloysius, bless him, uh, was... Uh, not, not the first, of course, but one of the first uh, to join the then new society. But the Society of Jesus in its early days was famous for going out on missions. Indeed, we might say famous for leaving the 99, who we might think of as continental Europe and the then known church, and going off in search of lost souls, going as far afield as the new world and to Japan. As it were, these priests left uh, the comfortable arms of where Holy Mother Church was already established and went abroad into the wider vineyard of the Lord there to seek souls in need of salvation. To this day, of course, the efforts of those missionaries uh, still uh, bears fruit. In South America, all over Asia, in India, in the Near East. All these places largely owe their receipt of the gospel to the efforts of the Jesuits. And even Japan. Some of you may be familiar, of course, with the story that the success of the Jesuits was not at first obvious. At the beginning of the 17th century, Japan became suspicious of these foreign colonials and eventually became once more insulated and banned all foreigners from her shores, outlawing even the Jesuit missionaries. And so that situation remained for some 300 years. And in the 19th century, Japan once more opened her gates to foreigners. And among the first to return were Jesuit missionaries. Thinking that they would have to start all over again. There having been 300 years without their presence to tend those initial flocks, that first wave of conversions in the 17th century. And yet, and yet, as they gradually went out from the cities into the villages and the hills of the countryside, to little villages and towns, various 
of the native population would make themselves known to them and ask them, are you childless fathers? Seemingly, it was the beard of the missionaries that gave them away. But what they then discovered was that for 300 years, Christians, despite the faith being outlawed and despite initial great persecutions, had persisted in those little far out villages and places. They had continued to baptize each other, continued to repeat the parables from the gospels that the missionaries had taught them and had kept the faith without the sacraments for all those 300 years. Are you childless fathers? They asked, the missionary returns. And then great was their delight to receive once again the assurance of grace in the certainty that the sacraments provide to make confession, have their sins absolved and to receive again the bread of life in the Holy Eucharist. We, my brothers and sisters, we ourselves, especially in this present time, might take hope and inspiration from stories such as these, and indeed of the life and zeal and fervour of one even so young as Saint Aloysius Gonzaga. I have talked before about the tragedy that has befallen many young vocations in recent years, where young men and young women to the religious life have been turned away from seminaries and convents and told to live a little or even a lot in the world. and who subsequently, whose consciences then, of course, have been adulterated, and whose true path in life has been distracted. And only the other day we reflected upon the attack on the innocence of our very young, in our contemporary society. In so many ways, no better than the debauched times of the early Romans who persecuted the early church. Yes, my brothers and sisters, even here in this city of Brighton and Hove, there is a roaring sex slave trade and sadly, yes, involving children. And this is repeated around the country and throughout our so-called civilised West. For all the demonstrations about historical slavery, it's interesting that nobody marches in protest or raises a against the extreme injustice committed against the most vulnerable in our society, in modern slavery. And the modern slavery trade is not limited to fornication and promiscuity and pornography, but also to, of course, to the abuse of immigrant workers promised that the towns are paved with gold, the streets of the towns are paved with gold, and yet find themselves brought over by the truckload 
to sit on street corners begging for small change. Where is the protest? Where is the demonstration? Where is the march decrying the modern slave trade? While our society today rages and rampages about sins committed to ancestors and tearing down statues that hurt no one, being inanimate objects. The very thing that they claim to be decrying still goes on and they say nothing about it. They say nothing about it, my brothers and sisters, because they enjoy the fruits they enjoy the liberty of being able to watch pornography they enjoy the liberty of being able to wear their designer branded label t-shirts at the cost and expense of little hands and fingers. That are paid less than a dollar a month. And truth be told, our whole society here in the West is still to a greater rather than lesser extent, built on the profit of those who do not earn a fair wage for their labours. For sure, my brothers and sisters, something needs to change in our culture and in our society. But spray painting inanimate objects, defacing war memorials, dishonouring those who gave their lives for the freedoms so many are able to enjoy today. None of that will change what needs to be changed which ultimately and fundamentally is the attitude and approach of ourselves. No amount of legislation, no amount of revised HR policies, clearly for the past 30 or more years, has worked. There is no systemic racism. I defy anyone to find in the policies and the legislations of Western governments and police forces rules and regulations specifically targeted at black or BME people to a disadvantage. No, they don't exist anymore. The politically correct thought police would not allow that. But what does exist? What is the problem? Is that there still remains a culture, an attitude an approach by individuals
it is they who are racist. And perhaps, sadly, it is the families and communities that they come from that are racist. Again, the only way this is going to change, the only way this is going to be altered, the only way modern slavery is going to be properly addressed and stopped is when we as Christians manifest in our lives the two great commandments to love God and to love our neighbour. If the one and a half, approximately, billion Christians around the world all manifested in the living of their whole lives, both seen and unseen, private and public, at home, in the workplace and socially, love of God and true love of neighbour, that would have a huge impact on our cultures and societies. As I've asked you many times before, just think for a moment, imagine if you would, such a world where every Christian strove to manifest in this life their citizenship of heaven. If every Christian in this life, in this world, strove to live like angelic beings, as messengers of God's love in thought and word and deed. For sure, my brothers and sisters, it is a high ideal, it is a tall order but it's not one that we were ever expected to do by our own strength. My grace is sufficient for thee, said the Lord God to St Paul. My strength is found in your weakness. We, my brothers and sisters, should hope to manifest such faith as those Japanese converts did for 300 years, despite not having the sacraments. But who continue to strive to live in love with God and with each other by sharing the story of God's love revealed to the world in Jesus and in doing so becoming themselves like him. In like fashion so should we my brothers and sisters especially we who have access and recourse to the sacraments. Yes, indeed, at the moment in a limited fashion, but even so, 
we've seen what is possible in history. We've seen that the church will out, that the gospel will out, that the sacraments, God's grace, will return. But as we said the other day, it's one thing to receive God's grace. It's another thing to cooperate and collaborate with it and manifest it in our lives. If we want real change to take place in our society today, we need ourselves as Christians to effect real change in our own lives first. And in this way, affect change in the lives of those around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father.
Viscum et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Quis ascendit in montem Domini, aut quis stabit in loco sanctu egus, innocens manibus et mundo corde. Sacrificium de manibus meus, et laudem gloria nobis sui, et ibi tati popo nostrum totius preclete sue sancti. Amen. Ternomnia secula seculorum. Amen. Nominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, sosum corda, habemus et dominum, gratius et amus domino Deo nostro, dignum et iustum eis, vere dignum et iustum et ecum et salutari, nos ibi sempre et ubique, gratius et ajudai, domine sancte patero, nipotente et tene et eius. Qui cum unigenito Filio Tu, e Spiritu Santo, unis est Eius, unis est Dominus, non in unis singularitate persona, e sed in unis genitante substantia, qual delim de Tua gloria revelanti te credimus, hoc de Filio Tuo, hoc de Spiritu Santo, sine differenzia de scherzioni sentimus, uti confessione vera e semtenaico e de etatis, e de personis pofretas, e de licenzia unitas, e de mestati d'oreto loqualitas. Pam laudent angeli arquae cangeli cerubim quoque ex serfim qui non cesem clamare quotidie una voce dicentes. Sanctus, 
Santos, Santos, Dominus Deus, Sabe, Arta, Plenis, Unceli, Etera, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
Pues puedo pedir la ayuda ahorita. Ornia secula seculorum. Amen. Orne, precetti salutaribus moneti divinus adoptione formati. Ademus dice. Ante nos terquies in celis, santificetum novum tuum, an vene ad remum tuum, fie voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Pane nos in quadrigiano de nobis hodie, dimita in omnis, debita nostra, signa nos dimitimus debitoribus nostri, et ne nos inducas in tentazione. Se libra nostra mano. Per mia secula seculorum. Amen. Pazza Domini sit sempero vobiscum, et cum spirito tuo. Ece onus Dei, ece qui tolit peccatum mundi. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre subtectum meum, sed tantum dignamo et sed nabitur anima mea. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre subtectum meum, sed tantum dignamo et sed nabitur anima mea. 
Domine, non sum nimius sut indre subtectum meum, sed tantum dignam bo et sanctabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
panem celi dei teis, panem angelorum adutavit homo. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Orde. Angelorum est nutritos angelicis etiam domine et amoribus videre, et eius quem hodie calimus exemplo in graziarum semper actione manere. Er Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium tuum, qui tecum vivida regna ad unilitati solitus sancti deis, per ogni secula seculorum. Amen. Orde. Sancta tua nos Domine, sumta vivivent, vivificent, et misericordiae sempiterne, preparent expiatos. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum Filium tuum, qui tecum vivida regna ad unilitati solitus sancti deis, per ogni secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo, ita in misa est, Deo gratia. In nome Domine Benedictum, ex abnoco dusco in secula, auditorio nostrum in nome Domini, qui feci cedim et terra. Benedicat vos, omnipotentes. Pate, et filius, et spiritus sanctus. Amen. In nome Domino Soviscum, Et cum spirito tuo, sequentia sancti evangelii secundum ducam, gloria a ti, mi Domine. In ino tempore, erant a propria influentes ad Iesum, publicani et peccatores, ut ad iderum deilum, et mumorabunt farisei escrive dicentes, que a chi peccatores recifit et manducat cum is, et ed ad inos paradolamis tam dicens, quis ex vobis homo, qui habe centum oves, et si per iterit unam ex ilis, non edimitet non agenterat novem in deserto, et vadit ad ilam, quei pevereat, donec in venia team, et cum in venere team, imponit in cumulus suus gaudens, et veniens domum convocat amicos et vicinos, dicent ilis, congratulam inimici, quei in venia ovem meam, quei pereriat, dico vobis, quod ita gaudium erit in celo, super uno peccatore, penitentia magente, quam super, non agitando novem justus, qui non indigent politentia. Aut qui mulia habent drachmas decent, si herdideri drachmam unam, non et ecendit lucernam, et everit domum et et querit et indigente donic et veniat, et cum i venerit convocat amicas e vicinas dicent, congratulam in imici, qui in veni drachmam, quam herdideram, et ad ego vobis, Gaudium erit corram angelis Dei, super uno peccatore penitentia magente. Deo gratias. God save Elizabeth our Queen and graciously hear us when we call upon thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, upon whom thy mercy has laid the government of this kingdom. May she be given so great a measure of every virtue. Thus worthily adorned, may she turn aside from all wickedness, may she overcome her enemies, and with her consort and the royal family, May she come at last in grace to thee, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. 